Danas kad neko spomene Hitlera, svi gledaju samo sve crno. Pa čekaj zašto? Wait, how did we get here? It's safe to say that the people of Balkans are prisoners of geography. For centuries, people sharing the same culture and language have been separated by two worlds, East and West, torn with any idea of unity and crushed by the mighty ones. This is one of those stories, the story behind the Serbs and Croats and why they so immensely hate each other. To understand this, we must first understand the identities of these two. Serbs and Croats are Slavic people located in Southern Europe, or more precisely, the Balkan Peninsula. Both of these have coexisted in this region for centuries to the point where many married each other. So what is it really that separates these two? The main problem with Serbs and Croats appears when defining Croatia's national identity. One way of defining it is by language. Both Serbs and Croats speak their own variation of the standardized language called Serbo-Croatian, which no longer exists and is absurdly divided into several languages that are completely identical. The differences are as small as the ones between American and British variation of the English language. Both claim to be the fair owners of the Serbo-Croatian, but we'll come back to this later. Now, let's look at the biggest and probably the most important divider of these two. Religion. Serbs are predominantly Orthodox Christians, which is the oldest and most unchanged form of Christianity to date hence the name Orthodox. People from Serbia are Orthodox due to the Byzantine rule of the Balkans. Croatians, however, are Catholics. Their faith was implemented due to the rule of Austro-Hungarian Empire. So how did it all start? The conflict between Serbs and Croats started during the Serbian rebellion against Ottomans, who controlled the Balkans for 500 years. What essentially happened is that Serbs retrieved up in the north every time they striked Ottomans and many started living under the Austro-Hungarian rule. Austro-Hungarians saw the opportunity and made these people their own frontier men, also known as Krajšnici. Serbs were considered great fighters, rebelling against Ottomans for centuries. They were given land at the border of the empire to protect it from incoming attacks. They were obliged to defend the country, but for a turn got benefits such as not having to pay the fine to the feudals and the church. Croatian population, which was already settled in Austria-Hungary, had to pay these fines. This upset a lot of people. They felt oppressed and many fought hard to become frontiersmen like Serbs, but most didn't. Now even though these benefits were great for Serbs, their life was far from perfect. They had no political power whatsoever and their language was forbidden. Rights were stripped down to bare minimum. And this was the birth of Serbophobia. It is important to note that this conflict isn't an ethnic one, but rather a societal one, considering the small differences between these two. So then, if Serbs and Croats are the same people, how were they divided? It's worth to mention that Croat was a geographical term due to the fact that the nation of Croatia didn't exist. In some of Austro-Hungarian demographic documents, the so-called Croatian language was never even mentioned. It all fell under the name Serbian because the Serbian nationality, ethnicity and statehood have existed since medieval times. Now there are certain sources that will point out that the Kingdom of Croatia used to exist. However, there is not a single hard evidence to prove this argument. So then, how was Croatian identity established? Argument number one. As said before, Croats are predominantly Catholics. And this is because of the principle that the feudal society of Austria-Hungary used. Cuius regio, ilius religio. Translated to English, whose land, his religion. This essentially meant that the ruler's religion was the one that everyone under the state had to practice, so many Serbs who lived under the Austro-Hungarian rule became Catholics. But again, where does the term Croat derive from, and why aren't they just called Catholic Serbs? This leads us to argument number two. When the feudal society fell through the revolution in 1848, capitalism was on its rise, and a new principle was established. Cuius regio, 
Ilius Nazio, whose land, his nation, which essentially meant that every citizen of Croatia had to be Croatian, regardless of their religion or ethnicity. Serbs could have been Orthodox Serbs, but their legal denunciation was Orthodox Croatians. This is because Croatians got their own state, which was under the Austro-Hungarian rule. Something like California in the United States. And this was the absolute birth of Croatian national identity and was soon to rise. During this way of ruling a country, Serbs were severely oppressed in numerous ways. The term Serb was avoided as much as possible. Serbian Orthodox Church was replaced with Greek Orthodox Church. Serbs wanted to preserve their national and political identity and they didn't fall prey to the suppressions throughout the centuries of both Ottoman and Austro-Hungarian rule. If there was anything Serbs knew about, it was oppression. Many rebelled and as a result, got executed. Other reason for such treatment of Serbs was the geopolitical position of Croatia. If we look at Croatia today, the country has no strategic depth, meaning that there is practically no significant Croatian city that lies more than 60 kilometers from the border, making Croatia vulnerable from all sides. Croats soon realized that there was no hope for the country as it was and wanted to make a change. A change which would ensure Croatia's strategic depth by including Bosnian territory into Croatia. Now, Bosnia was and still is a multicultural society, and Serbs were one of the largest ethnicities at that time. The only true way of ensuring this plan to work was to get rid of Serbs. But we will get to this later. After the Great War, Austria-Hungary was dissolved, and Serbs and Croats managed to live under the newly formed Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia had a simple concept of uniting the southern Slavs and ignoring the small differences that divided them, thus making all of us immune to the attacks from larger empires. However, many Croatians opposed the idea of unity with Serbs, and for one simple reason. The complex of small differences. Uniting with Serbs would make the newly formed Croatian identity absurd due to how similar these two were. But lucky for them, and unlucky for Serbs, the first Yugoslavia was short-lasting. Another war was on its way, which is of course... As soon as the war started, Croatians allied with Axis powers which allowed them for the first time in history to have a state of their own. The infamous independent state of Croatia, led by Croatian fascists known as Ustaše and characterized by its brutality. This country fulfilled the plans of Croatians to include the Bosnian territory. Independent state of Croatia became home to one of the most brutal concentration camps to this day, Jasenovac. As Jewish historian Gidon Greif described it, Jasenovac was the Auschwitz of the Balkans. The only difference, however, is that Auschwitz killed people systematically, putting them in the gas chambers and ending their life quickly. Jasenovac was a horror of different scale. Even the Hitler's representative in Zagreb wrote, the Ustasha camps in the independent state of Croatia are the quote-unquote epitome of horror. Gideon Greif described in his book that Ustasha altogether had 57 different torture methods which were of pure sadistic nature, ranging from burning people alive to head cutting, nailing people's heads, etc. Croatians went as far as to create a knife specifically meant to kill Serbs, the Serb cutter. And the reason for all this? An ethnically clean Croatian state. Independent state of Croatia was the only country in the world to have a concentration camp specifically made for children. This was of course the Astrebarsko concentration camp. At the end of the war, estimates of dead were ranging from just a few thousand to several hundred thousands. The International Commission estimated around 700,000 Serbs, 80,000 Roma, and 23,000 Jews, while children altogether made up around 110,000. Serbs and Croats were reunited again into a new socialist Yugoslavia. This Yugoslavia was led by partisans who wanted to hold brotherhood and unity of Serbs and Croats, and thus allowed Croatia to have a republic of its own, despite the severe war crimes they have committed. Croatians were still not happy with the idea of Yugoslavia and unilaterally seceded from it in 1991, starting a domino effect and causing Yugoslavia to fall apart. 
There were many victims of this war from the both sides, but there were few exceptional cases. One of them was Operation Storm. It was an operation to once again make a pure ethnic Croatian state. In one day, Croats managed to expel around 250,000 Serbs from their homes by sending them to the Serbian part of Yugoslavia. This war is still a hotly debated topic in the Balkans. People in Serbia do have a lot of hate towards Croats, but the Serbian state does not condone nor allow this kind of behavior. On the other side, Croatian state embraces the fascist history of Croatia and allows musicians to sing propaganda songs, hooligans to attack Serbs, and historians to rewrite the history. The point of this film is not to aim at Croatians or Serbs, but to state out historical facts which cannot be changed. We need to look forward and stop embracing the terrible acts that were committed in the past. The day our countries are no longer hostile is the day I'll be happy.